There we go. Good afternoon. Welcome to the Life with Joey Calvo podcast. I am Joey Calvo. Uh, our podcast is part of the World Podcast Network. Now with over 1,100 podcasts, visit the World Podcast Network at HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash worldpodcast.network to listen to podcasts in over 12 genres. Come vote our podcast episodes up and help us rise to the leaderboard as and also if you have a podcast of your own you can join for free all right so with that being said and done our guest today is karen deloche and she is she helps those suffering from negative soul damaged mindsets experience joy-filled artistic excellence through creative wellness exercises karen welcome to the podcast first of all Thank um, you so much. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and uh, boy, if I would have known you months ago, I, I was in that damaged. I was to the point where I was going to put myself in inclusion. Mm-hmm. So, uh, but I, I, I had some guests that kind of helped me out, and I have a, 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 a quote unquote um, anonymous that's been a big support as well. So, uh, so. Um, I'm going to have you explain how you got to this point where you're at right now. Um, you know, I mean, I, I, I've read it. It's, it's in the description, you know, of, of what this, uh, podcast is about, but I'm going to let you explain it. Okay. I'm happy to. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm a teacher, so talking comes easy for me. (laughs) Mm -hmm. I'm also an artist. I'm an art mentor. I'm an actor, filmmaker, author, uh, and basically creativity specialist. It's my area that I am passionate about because I've seen so much joy and fulfillment and uh, peace that people get when they get to be creative. And what I've learned the last couple of years, the science backs up what I've experienced in my studio and when I'm teaching is that there is a chemical release of serotonin, which is the happiness, happiness Mm -hmm. chemical when you do creative things. Like you, you're a podcaster, you're making something from nothing, you're creating Mm -hmm. content and you are engaging your brilliant right brain as you do that because your right brain is connecting because there's technical aspects of it, which is left brain brilliance, which is critical thinking and memorization and order and timeliness and all of those aspects of your left brain, your right brain is when you are engaging in the moment and exercising those creative gifts that are in that hemisphere. When you do that, you're creating neuro connections that make you more brilliant. Get over brain fog, help you recover if you have some memory issues. Engage in your right brain and you will find improvement. So that's what I started discovering and finding out other ways because everybody doesn't want to be an artist. I don't understand that, but it's just the truth. Uh, But there's so many ways to be creative. Creative. You know, you don't have to be a musician or a singer or a dancer to do it. There are a lot of ways. But I say the way to find out mm-hmm. is what did you enjoy doing when you were five years old? Do you remember? Did you like to color, paint, draw? Did you like to jump, run? Did you like to tell mm-hmm. stories, direct direct people in plays in the playground like I did when I was five? <laughs> or did you did you love to make dramas? And one of my sons everything became a drum. It didn't matter what it was. He was drumming. His fingers were drumming. Of course, mm-hmm. he ended up a drummer, right? He's a musician. Yeah. <laughs> but you can look at what you enjoy. Did you love spinning and dancing and jumping? You know, maybe you won't be a prima ballerina at this point in your life, but you can still enjoy dancing. Mm-hmm. My favorite Christmas present is when my husband bought us ballroom dancing lessons. And oh. we ended up bringing the whole family and all of our friends and our church. We ended up having a blast doing mm-hmm. that for you. Um, it's it's a there's ways to engage in these wonderful wonderful ways to be creative and so I've been investigating that and that's what I do is I help people find their creative joy and it, it's we're meant to be expressive that is part of our humanity I know some people are afraid of AI I'm not afraid of AI I use it I use Chat GPT mm. but it is very left brain it's not mm. right. 
brain and it's never going to replace humanity. It's not going to repay, replace our imaginative, intuitive, creative right brain. So the more we can catch up to our left brains with right brain activity, we will find we're working in our most brilliant place, no matter how old we are. Okay. Now, um, what I put in the comments, though, in, in the description, is uh, we're going to go back, back in time. <laughs> okay. Um, about you in reference to what you went through over the past, well, we'll say 20 years. Um, because in, in, in your, in your bio, um, you gave a little story about how, um, you, you know, you went through so many negative comments and, uh, I mean, I could say, I could say I went through the same thing too, um, when I was in when I was, you know, younger in school and stuff until I got into high school. Um, it took into high school for people to actually accept me a little bit for who I am um, and saw who I was back then. Um, of course, you know, there are some that to this day that still, they, 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 they're trying to be nice, but they're not. You know, they still, you know, try to control you in a way, you know, mm -hmm. and try to, and try to, you know, try to beat you down, even though they're trying to, they, they think they're lifting you up, but they're beating you down still. Yeah. So, um, tell us your side of the story to that. <laughs> yeah. You know, this is when I, I didn't realize, of course, until afterwards, that, that that right brain is very sensitive and it is the part of us that is connecting to our five, you know, mm. senses and it's good and it's beautiful, but too many of us have experienced like you describing in elementary school or younger where we're told either you can't draw, you can't paint, you can't act, you can't dance, you, you can't play a musical instrument, you can't sing. And those those comments wound our right, our right brain. It, it actually causes us to shut down and and keep that wound inside. And for me, I I was not sure what I wanted to do with my life. I, acting was my favorite thing. I got to act in college, um, but art was more challenging. I could draw. I love to draw people. I love to draw scenery. So I thought, well, I'll study art. And I did real well the first year with drawing and, and design. But once we got into painting classes, that's where I hit my, hit my, um, um, bumped up into the professors who hated my work. They couldn't stand my painting. Mm -hmm. They, they use four letter words to describe my Ooh. art. Every six weeks we have these critiques and I would be an ang anxious just mess going in there and their comments convinced me that I wasn't I couldn't paint mm -hmm. I, I came into agreement you can't paint you're terrible mm -hmm. you're a conventional artist so I, I I continued graduate school I went in for for sculpture and and ceramics which I still love and I still do mm -hmm. inside I still wanted to paint so 20 years almost I was shut down as a painter I would try mm -hmm. I started having these beautiful little baby boys and I wanted to paint their portraits. I'd get so far. And then I, then I would stumble against my own inability. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I, I, th well, I, the, there goes proves I can't do it. You know, I'm a terrible painter. And it took a mentor, somebody who came into my life mm -hmm. that um, had been to the old school Chicago art Institute where they taught fundamentals of painting and art. And he taught me how to paint. Well, that's the skills I was lacking. Mm -hmm. And even though those four different painting professors hated my work. I, I, I learned how to paint. And as a result, um, not only did I gain improvement and help me as an artist, but it also helped me as an art teacher. I have a mm -hmm. passion and to stir up the creative in others. And mm -hmm. that's what I get to do with my students. And I have yeah. some other stories uh, that I've seen happen, which is what ma has made me passionate about mm -hmm. everyone is the creative. Everyone mm -hmm. is creative. Otherwise, why do we have one hemisphere of our brain devoted to creativity if we aren't supposed to be creative? Right. Um, 
and and we we get trained up in schools. They teach us how to how to how to memorize and how to do all these beautiful left brain skills, which are measurable. They kind of squash or trivialize right brain skills. And if we've had those kind of damaging comments by 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 teachers or our parents or or even peers sometimes can do it to us, mm. it wound its wound goes deep. I can't. Yeah. How many people I come across that say, oh, I can't draw. I can't draw a stick figure. I, or, or maybe I can draw um, uh, a vase, but I can't draw people or, you know, just have these limit, limiting mindsets and thinking because of damage and wounds to that right brain. And I'm here to tell you, you can get healed. You can get fulfilled. And it's never too late. I don't care how old you are. I just turned 70 years old. You can learn. You you know, I've learned how to how to go online with teaching. <laughs> I learned yeah. how to podcast guests to share my message that yeah. you can do it. And there's so many ways to be creative, just like mm -hmm. you've discovered podcasting as a way to express yourself and create content and share your your worldview and your vision. And, yeah. it, and it helps so many people. Well, that's absolutely brilliant. Yeah. And, and so I, you know, I commend you for that and these efforts. No one knows but what it takes behind the scenes to get these these um, messages here online. <laughs> well, well, I, I will tell you the um, the last guest I had was the actual that that at the ad that I read in be, in the beginning for the World Podcast Network. I had the CEO on here last Tuesday, and he for the first. 10 minutes of the podcast, all he kept talking about was how wonderful I was, just like you were just saying just now. <laughs> he was going, he was going out and saying how you know how how I'm grabbing everyone. And I, I turned around and I and I, I'm thinking, I'm like, if I'm grabbing everyone, why don't I have like five thousand viewers, you know, watching, you know, if I'm grabbing everybody, you know. But I I was happy to hear it. And then he turned around. He took the podcast that he did with me. He went on Apple, gave it a five star review. And I mean, that's the greatest thing. And I've only been on this podcast network for three weeks now. And we already have about 900 page views. Wow. Yeah. Wonderful. I was amazed. I was truly amazed. And as of right now, I am happy to say. And probably by the end of the day today, uh, after this uh, podcast is done, we should be over 2,800 downloads. Wow. Congratulations. But, it's, but that's just five years. Yeah, I understand. That's just <laughs> five years. And yet the biggest, the most downloads I've had was with one of my peers, believe it or not, who was on my side, quote unquote. Um, you know, she rarely put me. She, I, I no, she, she, she never rare. She never put me down. Um, I mean, there was some. Uh, well, there was never much bad stuff between the two of us. Well, she turned around and wrote a book of poems. And put it on Amazon. And I had her on. And when we did that, it was like it it was like 30 years since I spoke to her. Wow. Yeah. And that was the most listened download of the podcast. Now, if we go to the YouTube version, I don't know if you ever watched the show Blue Bloods. Yes. Okay. I actually had um Gregory Jabara, who plays Garrett Moore, who you know, who's in the um in the uh one PP with Tom Selleck. He's the deputy commissioner. Okay. His his position's in one PP. Well, I had him on the podcast. Wow. <laughs> and we did this on YouTube, and he Oh no! I'm sorry. He got. He actually just got beaten out by one vote, one view right now. I had a, a, another, um, another. Um, how can I say this? I 
this person, I'll just say, this person was more of, she's, a, she's an artist, I'll say that. I'll say that. She's an artist and she, uh, she was going, she was just setting up um, an academy back then. And she wound up getting 65 views on YouTube. Gregory Jabara had 64. When we did that podcast with Gregory Jabara, it was three years ago? Three or four years ago, I think it was. This is when William Shatner went to space. <laughs> yeah. And what happened was the podcast, the audio podcast version ended, and we were on YouTube for an extra 20 minutes. And all we talked about from that 20 minutes was William Shatner. <laughs> It was it was interesting, um, but when we got on the World Podcast Network three weeks ago, I didn't expect. You know, I, I was thinking, oh yeah, like I'm like we're not going to get anywhere. I looked, and not even within an hour after we signed up, we had thirty two page views right off the bat. Wow! Like, wow! And then, like I said, now it's up to almost 800, 900. And plus, you know, we're able, we could actually do more with that than we could anything else. Um, so that's been a great, you know, that's been a great thing for this podcast. And like I said, if I didn't think about, if I didn't hear about this, about, like I said, three weeks ago, I was at the point where I was about to just close up shop, let go of this podcast, let go of everything in my whole life. It got to the point where I had, matter of fact, I had gone to the doctor. Got, I went, I went, saw my regular doctor. I got, I finally got a chance to see a podiatrist because I had edema in my, le in my feet. And so I finally get home. I get a phone call from the National Suicide Hotline. Somebody called them thinking I was going to commit suicide. Oh, no. I'm like, suicide's like the farthest thing in my mind. <laughs> farthest thing. The only way I would think about suicide is if, if I really had nothing good well everybody took that I had nothing good left in life but I was like wait a minute I I got th I have a life to look forward to you know I have a life to live but that's not the reason why I'm shutting down it wasn't even because of the life part it was just the emotional mental state that I was in mm. you know you know, I, I wanted to be on the outside looking in. I was, because I, you know, like I said earlier, and like you were saying about, you know, your art professors, you know, using four letter words. Well, my peers were like telling me what to do. Hmm. Like, you have to, you need to, you, you have to do this. You have to do that. You have to do that. Or not, and then do that. And I'm like, can I live my life, please? You know, and that's what got me. And I still have some people that still do it. And I I, I, I get to them and I'm like, you know what? I, I turned around. I actually left Facebook for nine days, I was told. I was off Facebook for nine days. Would you believe that was the most stress-free time I ever had? <laughs> yes. It was the greatest thing in my life. I was like, wow, you know, and I, I didn't feel, I wasn't feeling the stress. I wasn't feeling any pressure on me, you know, A, B, and C. I get back on, first rule, I said, we don't talk about psychiatrists. Don't tell me what to do. If you're going to tell me what to do, get unfriend yourself or I will boot you. And ever since then, 
I I have people right. I I have one person right now, um, who I knew from school. Well, actually, her brother-in-law used to live down the street from me, and she she's a nurse, and she turned around and she told because I almost had a heart attack last month, mm. or I thought I had. I thought I was having one. Yeah. And I also have type 2 diabetes and so on. So, make a long story short, she suggested this medication. I said, okay. She said, it'll help you with this, this, and lose weight. I said, great. I like this idea. So, I turned around and I spoke to my cardiologist. And the cardiologist was like, well, it's a 45 minute sit down. Okay. So, this morning, as I was doing my traveling home, which should have been, I should have been home like four, three hours or two hours before. Um, she calls me up and, you know, reminds me about the lab results and so on to actually find out I was a little dehydrated when I went and got the lab work done. Hmm. I was like, okay, no problem. I said, we're working on that. Here it is, water. <laughs> I got mine too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, but I turned around to her and I said, listen, I still want to go on this medication. She was agreeing with me on it. But she wanted to do one more lab work before we do it. I said, okay. So in another month, we're going to, as soon as that lab work gets done, you know, we'll get it done and then hopefully we'll switch over to that. Um. But, yeah, a lot goes through. And I always turn around, just like you're saying right now, in reference to, you know, what people say. I always say words can hurt. Absolutely. Words hurt Absolutely. in the worst way. They mm -hmm. think, you know, words, you think the words, the words that you use help, but they don't. No. And no. I couldn't stress that enough. Right, your words matter. They do yeah. matter. Yeah, Absolutely. and 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 when I when I mention that, it's like, you know, like, and I and I and I'll be honest. I've had people turn around, literally, on Facebook, curse out the other ones that had gone neg that went negative, and I'm like, holy crap! I was like. I felt like World War Three was happening in Facebook. <laughs> you know? Like, like this this person was telling this person, and I'm sitting, I'm sitting there as so I'm reading it, and I'm like, <laughs> wow. And then, you know, them explaining why, and I'm like, yeah. But I but I always turn around and I literally say, you know, you gotta watch. When you when you think you're suggesting something, you're not suggesting. You're telling me, hmm. and I take it like that, you know. And y you know how you saying that art is your self therapy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, art is well. I I, I no, I can't say this is art, but. My self therapy is going to the casino. <laughs> do you have a system you use? I have a I have a little system I I do. I actually have now learned which casino to go to when when I when I know I'm doing good, and then I know which <laughs> other casinos not to go to. Um, but but in reference to and and and, and make a long story short on that one is. I had turned around and I um, went to the Borgata in Atlantic City, being I'm in Philadelphia. So I go to Atlantic City at least once a month. So I, I went I went to the Borgata and I accidentally hit I actually played like what would have been a bucket a quarter, wind up being six and a quarter because it was a nickel machine. 
because they had a three they have a three they have three denominations on it. They have a penny, two cent, and five cent on the same machine. Well, I didn't hit it to the one cent, so I let it go at five cent. I get four scattered. Now four scattered normally on a penny bet is twenty dollars. Well, it wound up being two hundred dollars. Wow. So I was, I was like, yeah, I'm happy about that. So, yeah. But, but so, um, what's the best advice you would give someone who, who, well, I can't say, well, I'm not down anymore, but, um, what's the, for, for someone who's, who's in a rut right now, who's, Who's really? I, I well, yeah, I could say near beyond repair, quote unquote. And you know they're they're thinking about inclusion, or they're thinking about well, I won't say they're thinking about suicide. Okay. Okay, they're thinking about just stepping away from the world. And just you know, watching everything from the outside. Yeah. What? Well, that's a good question. That is yeah. a really good question, Joey, because I think a lot of people are in that state that you're describing, um, and I think part of it is because they've spent a lifetime and had been educated and in their jobs, really developing and working through their left brain skills to the detriment and the exclusion or triviality of their right brain skills, because we all have right brain gifts. And mm -hmm. so connecting the neural pathways between left and right is really not hard to do. I, I can give you some examples, right? Okay. Take a stroll. Now I'm not talking about a Fitbit count your steps kind of stroll. I'm mm -hmm. talking about go outside, look around, smell the flowers, smell, mm -hmm. you know, Listen to the birds singing. See the sky. Right now, everybody's looking at the uh, the eclipse. Right, at least yeah, yeah, yeah. it's flat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, we're, we're getting there. <laughs> you will release serotonin. There is a, a chemical release when you do these things. Mm -hmm. um, sit down on a bench. Hear the children play. Maybe bring bring a sketchbook and just doodle. Just they call it neuro doodling. Just release your brain, your left brain, and just don't even think about it. Just just start drawing. Or maybe a, uh, people like to journal, write down little notes, or 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 um, your friend that does poetry. They just let it flow. It's called a mm -hmm. flow state when yeah. you're in the moment. You're not thinking about the past, the future. You're not struggling with anything. You're just mm -hmm. releasing that stress, breathing in the fresh air. And I'm telling you, it really does help. It releases that serotonin. Mm -hmm. The happiness yeah. chemical, and and you know that's just one way. Now I have a, I have a free three part podcast that I give out that's uh, on this topic. It, all you do is go to getcreativewithkaren.com and and you can register for it. And it comes out. It, it's 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 good for seven days. There's three episodes, and I have very specific suggestions or ideas of how you can build up your own right brain creative side. And it's a lot of people are struggling with, um, with brain fog, you know, mm -hmm. or, or difficulties thinking. And, and you, you know, want to hear, here's a good one. Here's a real good one. Anybody could do this singing in the shower. <laughs> if you were like me, you were told all your life, you can't sing. You, mm -hmm. you and again, I became convinced I couldn't sing. I didn't know you could learn to sing. Yeah. Um, but nobody can stop me from singing in the shower. So there you are, Joey. You're scrub a dub dummy. You're rubbing yep. the tongue. You're letting your left brain rest. You're not trying to figure anything out. You're just mm -hmm. enjoying and you're singing your favorite song along with yeah. the scrub a dub dub. Nobody's yeah. listening. Nobody can care if you're on key or not or you change keys. That's just my problem. So there yeah. you are. You're drying off. And you feel good because not yeah. only have you have that nice warm shower, even if you wear you do a cold shower, you got that towel drying you off. Yeah. And suddenly you you think of something you hadn't thought of before, mm -hmm. or solve a problem that you didn't realize that you just made some new connections in that shower while you were resting your left brain or using it as you used your soap or whatever shampoo. Mm -hmm. 
But now these neural connections between your left brain and right brain are bringing health and wellness and healing to you. Yeah. And creating new pathways for imagination, for your um, intuitive and imaginative self is there. Uh, inventions happen this way. I mean, it's so cool. Or how about when you wake up, when you first wake up? I know writers that have a sketchbook, right? Mm. Or, or a um, journal right by their bed when they wake up and they maybe remember a dream or some ideas they have. Some that's titled for my program, Art as Self Therapy, came mm. to me when I first woke up. It wasn't something I'd even thought of before. Mm. Uh, and, and, you know, as I've researched and found these connections between people, uh, people using their left, their right brain to have a more fulfilled and joyful life. So I encourage any listener that is like, like Joy was describing in a rut or in a place of just not feeling fulfilled in their life, you know, get, watch this podcast series Take some of the ideas. Some more of ideas are, how about cooking, using recipes? Maybe you hadn't tried something. Try something new. Find find a way to put something together that anybody can enjoy that's, that's mm -hmm. in, in your life or family by yeah. people. Let's try something new. Or um, gardening. I know my husband's a master gardener, and he he learned from, from my art classes how to put flowers in, in beds together. And, I, oh, I just love, I love all the color, and I love all the, the um, creativity that he brings with his, uh, his uh, gardening. <laughs> good. Just that's a few good. ideas. <laughs> yeah. Well, one thing I, I will tell you that I, and I, I, I love doing, is when I do go to Lang City, if I if because the casinos are kind of split apart. There's nine casinos in in, in Lang City. Three are on the marina, and the rest are on the boardwalk. So if I decide I'm going to go to the boardwalk, I'll walk the beach, and I usually go late at night. I mean, late late at night. Like I'll get there. One o'clock in the morning. Wow! <laughs> and because I, I've I've learned that by one o'clock in the morning, the casinos start emptying out. So it's less, you know, there's not a lot of people around. But the first train that leaves Atlantic City to go back to come back towards Philadelphia is like four in the morning. So sometimes I try to stick it out a little bit. And I try to catch the sunrise. Oh, wow. To come yeah. right over the ocean. And sometimes it's, when I do get that opportunity, it's like the most beautiful thing. Oh, to yes. especially, especially coming from the ocean. Now, if I'm on the marina, what I normally do is be right at Harris, there's a bridge. That goes over from Lake City to Brigantine, New Jersey. And right by there, of course, you know, the bay, you know, it's like the, you know, like you're on the beach in the ocean mm -hmm. on the boardwalk. So, you know, the water's coming in. But if you look through the bridge, underneath the bridge, of course, and you look far out. Now, if you're out during the day, you can literally see it. But you actually see where the bay and the ocean connect. Wow. And it, it's a, it is miraculous. And normally when I stay down there, I that's what I do. I try to get like an as close to an ocean view as possible. Yeah. Not only because of that, but I also like you, you know, you know, like you were mentioning about the serotonin and all that. Well, I try to make it it, it if I had somebody special with me, I try to make it the most romantic thing in the world. <laughs> I really do. I try to want to make it romantic because I want that person to know they're, you know, they're like that. You know, it's like when I'm looking at that ocean, I'm looking at them. Yeah. And, 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 and you know, letting them know how special they really are. And, um, my husband and I are in the habit. We, yeah end our day taking a walk. And again, it's a stroll. It's, it's yeah. not a Fitbit 
I, I ride my bike for my exercise. So mm -hmm. this is just to be together. And sometimes we'll hold hands, but we watch the sunset, uh, mm -hmm. talk about the day. And it's a beautiful way to connect with each other, with our God, with ourselves and, mm -hmm. and just enjoy and, and replenish. You know, I, I am a, a, a highly creative person every day and I can't help it. You know, it, mm -hmm. it's a drive in me. Uh, it's why I haven't necessarily succeeded in business because I've mm -hmm. spent so much time mm -hmm. being creative because they, we need them both, you know, we need them both, but yeah. it's, it's, I highly recommend that. So I'm, I'm yeah. glad you found that. I live in, in the Charleston, South Carolina area. We're right on the coast. So yeah. it doesn't take me long to get to the beach. It's one of my favorite places. We do. Yeah. Things. We have some of the barrier islands that actually on one side, you see the sun come up mm -hmm. and on the other side of the barrier island, you watch the sun go down. So you've got, ah. You can actually see sometimes from where you are both sunrise and sunset. Very, very oh, beautiful. I have to keep that in mind when it comes to vacation time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because yeah, I, I, I do look at getaways. And then um, one thing I'm looking at is going to – I've never left the country. I've gone to Vegas, and I've gone to Orlando. And – I've been to Baltimore um, for work and personal. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm trying to pick up, quote unquote, another little niche of traveling. Um, so. Uh, yeah. I'm um, in, in uh, north of Myrtle Beach, right north of Myrtle Beach, South Carolina is Calabash, and they have they have casino ships. So even oh. though we don't, have, we don't have the casinos in South Carolina, you can yeah. if you're in Myrtle Beach, it's the only short drive up up the coast. Well, you you also have a famous celebrity from South Carolina too. Yeah, we do. Bill Murray lives here in the Charleston area. Oh He's wow! I wasn't even thinking Bill Murray. Believe it or not, I was thinking Vanna White. Oh yeah, she's from North Myrtle Beach, South yeah, Carolina. Yeah, really yeah, is, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Um, and unfortunately, like I said, nobody had any questions, and I ran out of questions because <laughs> uh, I mean everything I said, I literally just brought it out anyway. Um, <laughs> so, um, as we're uh, wrapping up here, how can people get to you besides the Get Creative with Karen .com? Yeah, that's that's my my main um, uh, get get to know me get get on my list is with that. But Karen Deloach Art dot com. I'm I'm actually Karen Deloach Art on Facebook. I'm on, um, you know, I have Karen Deloach Art dot com as a website um, to see my artwork. Um, I'm very, very interested in working with people. I, I try to work with people one-on-one. -on -one. I do have groups, but mm -hmm. I have a group on Facebook also, Christian Creatives, but I, I just love to talk to people and find out how I can help them with their personal creative ideas and thoughts and what they can do to stir up that right brain brilliance. Yeah. And keep it building and growing and catch up to that left brain brilliance yeah. that we get schooled in. Uh, but, you know, for me, especially through the years homeschooling, I came across a lot of, a lot of people that were homeschooling their children, not because they, they were brilliant, but because they were struggling. I know my children, all artists, all musicians didn't do well, sit down and be quiet school system for seven hours. Yeah. Uh, and they came home and they had to find other ways to find their own giftings. And, yeah. you know, for me, I was the art teacher for our homeschool and we created mm -hmm. co-ops and, and found working with a lot of students that had like one, David, my, my young man that had the, had the, um, uh, stroke at 18, he also had mm -hmm. been struggling with ADHD and mm -hmm. dyslexia and his mom brought him to my studio because he was not thriving in his academics. Mm. Well, it was, it was very evident that this young man was talented in the arts. He gained skills to do sculpture, mm. painting, drawing, and was doing so well. It enabled him to get the confidence he needed to graduate from high school. I started entering his work in youth art competitions and he was winning them. He even got best yeah. in show of all, oh. all ages, all other 
um, young people in the in the community. Unfortunately, he then had a traumatic brain injury wow. that caused a brain infection. He lost had to, they had to remove his skull. He's got a plastic mm -hmm. skull. He was in a he was not able to talk, not able mm -hmm. to walk. He'd had mm -hmm. a stroke, and his right hand was paralyzed. Wow. Well, that devas can you imagine? Eighteen years old, and there you are. You know yeah. you can't. You can't communicate. You can't express yourself. Yeah. He got out of the hospital after mm -hmm. four months and he could barely walk. He couldn't even talk. And his mom brought him to my studio. Well, I'm not an art therapist. I'm an artist, art teacher. Yeah. I'm, okay. Well, you know what? His left hand works. Let's see if he can draw left-handed. Let's, let's teach him to draw and, and write and paint left-handed. And mm -hmm. he did. He did so well. He caught mm -hmm. up with his right brain strength with his left hand to the point where his neurosurgeon called me. Wow. He's like, I've never called anybody's art teacher before. What are you doing with David? And I said, I don't know. I'm just teaching him to draw left hand. He said, well, he's gained strength, so much strength in his left hand. It's, it's stronger than my weak hand. And I'm a surgeon. Wow. And he wow. said, wow. that? Yeah, the that's of the brain is he is getting healing on his right side. Mm -hmm. Next thing you know, he's talking, he's walking. Yep. His, he didn't get that um, curled up thing that can happen with paralysis. He, he's, mm -hmm. he still has use of his right hand. It's not as strong as his left hand anymore, right. but he has a good life. And I'm telling you, I've watched him. He's, he's, uh, now a young adult and he he's doing great if you look at him you had no idea as a plastic skull you'd have no mm -hmm. idea what he's been through he wow. can, he's got a great sense of humor great great attitude about life mm -hmm. and what could have been the you know absolutely the end of his life has not been the end of his life so mm -hmm. I, you know his family credits yes he got all the medical attention you can get but she believes that the art saved him emotionally and right. physically and mentally and obviously his neurosurgeon thought so too. He said, keep up whatever you're doing. Keep it up. Yeah, that's <laughs> great. All right, Karen, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. And anytime that you have anything new that you want to promote, just reach out to me and I'll be happy to have you on here and we can bring it out and share it. Uh, hopefully um, people picked up what we, what, Hopefully they learned something off of this today and they, they may reach out to you um, and say, hey, you know, <laughs> this is going on. This is going on. Maybe maybe this could help, you know, or, or, you know, show me something that could work on where I'm at and, and, and being better within their lives and stuff. Um, I mean, I have someone who is goes out at night as bad as I do um, and does law enforcement work on the side. Hmm. And this person, I mean, busts, busts their, literally, I mean, goes out almost every night and for a couple hours and helps law enforcement in any way possible. Almost like a civilian, like a civilian officer. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I applaud that person mm -hmm. every time. <laughs> so um, maybe that person may turn around and, Hmm. You got frozen. As this yeah. is going out. Frozen. Now, what happened is I had that T-Mobile 5G internet, and the live stream sometimes goes out. <laughs> so that's that's what happened. So I apologize. I didn't know if the but, eclipse um, was bothering you. <laughs> no, 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 no. But but this person, like, there may be something else within what this person does at night, and I I try to put a little bit of encouragement into it. Um, but we, 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 
I've learned that there's something else that goes in there that um, excites, you know, builds that right that right brain, like you're saying. Um, but do you like to watch detective stories or read detective? I think we watch them because that's what they do. Yeah, they've been trained, but they're but those detectives are like. Oh, wow. I'm feeling this. My gut is saving my life. Or you've heard soldiers say that, you know, don't go there. You know, they, what, what is that? What is that? That's their left brain connecting with their mind and their, and their spirit. And they're getting, they're getting some communication that isn't natural. It's kind of supernatural. And, you know, the, those detectives will say, no, I, something's wrong here. I feel it. What are they feeling? You know, what, what, what those instincts are coming from that right brain brilliance yeah. that we all have access to? Yeah, well, this 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 person is getting to the right. Well, I I can't say maybe hasn't gotten to the right brain yet, but I I try to connect something like within that you know that they're not alone when they're out there helping mm -hmm. law enforcement, like letting them know that there's somebody that's supporting them, you know. As they're as they're out there, and kind of be like their worry wart, quote unquote, <laughs> you know, just you know, just just so you know they can have that confidence when they're out there helping law enforcement, and the the, the support that they have is doing the worrying and and making sure you know doing everything possible to you know keep the thought, you know, that everything's going to go fine when they're out, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and let, you know, take, take, it's like sacrificing their fear with yourself. So that's how I look at it when it, when that's it comes awesome. to, yeah. Like being that sat, you know, being that sacrificial um, person and being that, you know, being that true rock support, you know, for this person, um, you know, I mean, they they know where I stand about it, and that you know I'm behind them a hundred percent. But at the same time, I'm always afraid. Like I'm, there may be one day I may never hear from them again. You know, mm -hmm. something may happen while they're uh -huh. out there, and you know you don't hear from them. Uh -huh. So. They also know how I feel in reference to that too, mm -hmm. but but they but they but they know that I'm there, so that's the best thing. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. So, Karen, again, thank you so much <laughs> for your time. My uh, yeah, like I said, you're welcome to come back on this podcast anytime. Just okay. reach out, let me know. Okay. Um, and for those that are down in the dumps or like me wanted to be include going to inclusion a month ago, reach out to Karen because Karen will be able to give you a guide to get out of the being that you know that rut that you know that I'm not worthy, you know, they're you know I, I'm not that person, you know. Let Karen reach out to you and let Karen pull you out of that. I mean, you know, I I had um, another guest on here who's a wealth mindset coach. And she literally, this was, a, this was a month ago, matter of fact. No, two months ago. And she kind of gave me, Kind of like the same thing you're giving me, but she went, but she went deeper. Wow. She got real deep into it to wow. the point where she got me to see like all this. So, you know, um, you know, what you're doing is great as well. You know, like <laughs> you said, when you, you know, when you explain the story about David and, mm -hmm. and you know, the, the, the 18 year old that had the, the stroke and has a plastic uh, skull and your and how uh, how their nurse how his neurosurgeon reached out to you. So I mean, that's just as great as you know the support I had. Um, 
And yeah. and again, like I said, I thank you so much for coming on yeah. and and thank sharing you. and sharing um, everything. And, and and at the same time, I'm also apologizing because most of it was supposed to be about her, not me. <laughs> <laughs> but but I, I I do the best. And and the one thing I will say that I've learned, and I'm still learning, is the word try is like a piece of paper. You rip it up <laughs> and you toss it. I try not to use the word try, even though I just said it again. But, <laughs> but you're doing it. You're yeah, doing it. Every, it slips, but I do my best not to say it. And 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 you learn a lot from it. And like you know, like like you went through in your life, and I've gone through in mine. And you know, you know, you you, you pick up these new things. So, um, at least now with you, in reference to when I go to Lake City and look out the ocean, instead of looking out the ocean as just the ocean and the bay itself, give it an artistic view of it. You know, take a picture. You know, we all have these fantastic cameras now on our phones, right? Yeah. I, I do that. Um, matter of fact, on my on my Instagram, on the on the Life with Joey Cavill Instagram page, I posted sunrises. I posted the beach. You know, I posted you know places and like you know, like I said, when I go down there and spend the Spend nights down there. Uh, it won't show on here. You can put it but near your face. Put it right in front of your face. Yeah, there, there you go. go. Yeah, that's the, beautiful. Yeah, that's Ooh. the Morcada in Atlantic City. That's like where I told you about that $200 I hit. <laughs> I actually have a night coming up. <laughs> and I've never stayed there. So it's going to be a new experience for me in reference to that. That's awesome. Yeah. But uh, like I said, Karen, thank you so much. I, I, I'm I'm dragging this out the best I can as well. <laughs> uh, but I thank you very much for coming on. And like I said, anytime you ever want to come on, just let me know. All right. All right. Thank, you. Thank, thank you. Thank you so, so much. much. <laughs> you thank you so much, and thank you everyone for listening and watching the Life with Joey Kelly podcast. God bless us all. Take care. Bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs>